Everything's going to be just fine. Welcome to Filbert Flies. Welcome to this uh, probably the most terrifying flight I have ever streamed. Um, from Kathmandu down to Lukla and back, if we survive. If we survive. Um, yeah, in the Aerosoft Twin Otter. Now we have a new update which was released yesterday sometime, I believe. Uh, this is version 1.0.1, .1, I think, and apparently they've fixed some of the bugs in the plane, um, not least the sound. So we'll, we'll have, a little, uh, have a little look as we go along at how it is at the moment. Um, this is a flight that I did practice once yesterday, and you'll be pleased to hear it was a rip-roaring success, except for the fact that I flew down the wrong valley and couldn't find the airport. Aside from that, it went it went absolutely perfectly. Uh, anyway, a very warm welcome to everyone who is here. We have here uh, Swifty, Jenny, uh, Martin, Nikki, who is flying along in a Dornier Do288. Pardon me. We have Gibi VX. We have Simon. We have Paul. Um, who else do we have? Trolls, good afternoon. Hassan, Aussie MSFS pilot. And I think that's everyone who said hello. Oh, Veal Walden, Walden, welcome to you. And Rasmus, welcome to you. And Emma, I think that's everyone. And Alex, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to all of you. Um, yeah, nice to have you here. Uh, and I really will do my very, very best not to kill you today. Uh, but this is probably as close to death as you're likely to come in any of my streams. So just, just you know, forewarned is forearmed, you know. <laughs> um, the flight was perfect except for not being able to find the airport. <laughs> it's fine, Jenny. It's absolutely fine. Because what I did was I turned around, flew back to where I entered the valley, and then flew down the right valley. Absolutely fine. I did come a little close to some mountains, but... Um, you know, no closer than uh, 10 metres, I'd say, something like that. So it's absolutely fine. And today's going to be absolutely fine as well. Hello, Seared Lamb. Welcome. It should be an interesting flight. And Limo wonders what. Welcome. Uh, welcome to both of you. So I thought what we'd do today um, is to, uh, first of all, get a few bits of setting up done on the aircraft. And I thought I'd show you the inbuilt checklists because they're actually rather good. I had to play with them for the first time yesterday. Uh, so we'll do our before starting checks to start off with. Uh, we'll start by, I'm going to take my time here. I'm going to take my time because it's a short flight. It's half an hour each way. I've got a few hours to kill. There's absolutely no rush. And, the, you know, I, I'm under the probably mistaken belief that uh, spending more time setting up and, and sort of relaxing into the flight is, is going to save us. We'll see. Twitter is built for close mountain stuff. Exactly. The pushback guy doesn't even want to look at the plane. <laughs> no, he doesn't want the memory burned into his mind of what the plane looked like. I didn't forget you, Emma. I said hello, I'm sure, didn't I? If I didn't, I'm sorry, especially after your OMG as this THE Filbert Flies comment. Welcome, Emma. Lovely to have you here, as always. Club Filbert or no Club Filbert. <laughs> and Sam, hello. Uh, how many terrain, terrain pull-up did I have to endure? Oh, at least three. At least three. <laughs> You crashed five times with the plane because you stalled, so I think I'll be the best. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. I haven't... I, I mean, my my greatest achievement so far has been flying into Lukla and not putting it in the side of a mountain. But it may still... It may still happen. It may still happen. <laughs> uh, emergency fuel switches should be normal. Uh, fuel selector should be normal. Cabin lights and signs, yeah, we can pop up to the overhead and sort those out. So we're departing at around about 7.30, uh, 7.25, 7.30. The real flight that we're simulating departs at uh, 7.25. But if we're a bit later, so be it. So be it. And we are flying in live weather. Um, we're going to put those on to bright. We're going to put the entrance light on. Obviously, we don't have power, but uh, according to the checklist, you set this all up before you start. We're going to put the no smoking and seatbelt signs on, the flight compartment sign on, and uh, that will do us for now, I think. Uh, fuel boost pumps are off. Position light can come on as well. Be nice to have a little bit more light, wouldn't it? There it is, position light on. Pito heat can stay off. Generators can stay off. Flaps should be up. Prop levers, full forward. God, there's so many different checklists for this. The last one I looked at said they should be feathered, but anyway. 
no issue, we can put them full forward. Uh, ignition should be normal, and I'm pretty sure it will be. Yep, and we can turn on the DC and battery master switch. And we have light and power. Have they fixed the habit for the pl for the plane to pitch down like crazy? I don't know. I don't know. Some would say, uh, Melon, that uh, it is absolute madness to try a new update to a plane out for the very first time on stream while flying into the world's most dangerous airport. And to those people, I would say, yeah, you're probably right. Yet here we are. <laughs> Highly optimistic to think there'll be a return flight, I know. Boomslang, welcome, boss. How are you doing? Um, after you arrive at Kathmandu again, come along to Dubai. I was not sure about the range of the twat. The Airbus can barely make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the twat is kind of light, isn't it? Sergio, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Former flight tickets are always run way, one way. Wojtek, hello. I think I saw you on Volanta here, but I don't see you. So I guess you're 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 giving it a whirl. In are you flying trying to bring the arrow along, but offline? Uh, master switch comes on at this stage in proceedings. So you get all the lights on first and then you get the master switch on. Don't ask me why, it's weird, but that's what all the checklists say. This might be the only time I actually want Philbert to follow the checklist to the letter. It's my only hope of survival. <laughs> yeah. No flight plan at all, Wojtek. We are flying uh, VFR today. Uh, once, Hassan. Yeah, I had. I gave it a go yesterday. I gave it a go yesterday. And do it on Vatsim as well so more people can see what I'm saying. Yes. Now, I have to say, I am denied about whether to do it on Vatsim or not. And I initially thought I wouldn't because I don't really know what I'm doing. And then I thought the chances of there being any control on at this time in either Kathmandu or, or Lukla are very slim. And if they are, I've put in my remarks, new to VFR, new to Nepal or something like that. So I'll just, I'll just be honest. I'll say, look. I don't know how you file a VFR flight uh, in uh, in the pool. I have no idea, but this is what we're doing. And uh, if you'd like to give me some clearance, do. If you don't need to give me clearance, don't. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I don't think anyone's coming online. Oh, arrow online. Can the arrow get up to twelve thousand feet, Voitech? Most people aren't sky calls. This is very, very true, Charles. Exactly. Uh, no, we're not going to KTM. No, we're, we're just tracking an outbound uh, radial from it. Um, in fact, we're tracking two outbound radials from it. KTM is our saviour today, if we follow it properly. Scott, hello, boss. Welcome. How are you? I, uh, I'm, i yeah, so there there are two people then flying along. Uh, Nikki and Wojtek. Lost and confused, please help. Exactly. Because, you know, even Sky Gods can't know every pr ATC procedure from around the world. You know what I mean? All right, flaps are up. Fuel levers are off. Prop levers are full forward. Power levers should be at about 10%. Just nudge them forward a smidge. Let's just check they're working. Ooh, who's this? Seared lamb. Good grief. Good grief with a seven... Pound ninety-seven donation before I've even done anything. Thank you very, very much indeed. That's really, really nice of you. Much appreciated. Um, I'm guessing that's ten euros or ten dollars or something like that. Um, yeah, thank you very, very much. I'm on Vatsim Swifty. I'm on. I'm on Vatsim. He'll get it to twelve thousand feet whether it wants to or not. <laughs> Pilot doesn't care if there is ATC, but the passengers sure wish there was. <laughs> well, it's not like they can actually offer us any control or guidance. You know, it's VFR. It's all VFR. They might be able to stop us hitting uh, another aircraft, but that's about it, I think. Your plane bugged on the best part, so you'll reload the plane. Oh, Nikki, I'm sorry to hear that. That's how irritating. Um, right, we're just going to stick a bit more fuel in and uh, check out check out payload, etc. Uh, we've got 50% fuel now. Obviously, what one should do in this scenario is calculate exactly how much fuel one needs. Um, but what I know is that uh, it was enough to get us there yesterday, so I'm going to leave it at 50%. And as you can see, we've got uh, we've got a fairly heavy load today. Um, we've got a pilot and co-pilot, and we've got, uh, I would say, two passengers per row. I'm going to say about 10 passengers there. Uh, center of gravity is a little on the uh, forward side, but it's still within the range. And this is exactly how it flew out, how I flew it yesterday. So it's exactly how I'm going to fly it now. Jersey Bean, hello, welcome. How is life in the Channel Islands? Didn't the Sky God create all ATC procedures? <laughs> 
See that mountain over there? Yeah, don't fly into it. Exactly. Well, latest you can at least call search and rescue. This is true. This is true. But you'll be pleased to hear that I have called ahead to Lukla Airport, so they know our ETA and they will be uh, taking measures should we not arrive. 40 passengers currently. How do you know 40 passengers? I'm just looking at the weights. This looks like two per row, right? 163 kilograms. That's about two average sized people. Three, four, five, ten. Ten, boss. I'm going to say ten. Ten passengers across six rows. Oh, or are you talking about on your plane, on your a, on your light a, A320? Yeah, you could well be. So will we be, we'll be having three minutes separation or so, some tactical formation for our survival? We're going to have at least three minutes separation, yeah. <laughs> it has, yes, Nitro. It had an update yesterday. John Loves Aviation, welcome, welcome, welcome. How's the day going? The day's going very well. Oh, because 40 people are watching here. <laughs> yes. Mind turning on the ELT right now just to get ahead of the upcoming accident. I, I admire, well, I, I admire your consistent ability to have no faith whatsoever in my flying skills. <laughs> okay, right, let's get some, let's get the doors closed, shall we? We've got to do this at some point. We just, we just got to do it. We just got to do it. All right, here we are. There's no, get, there's no leaving now. Everyone who's on is here for the duration. Until we land or until we crash, whichever, whichever comes first. We're all squashed in at the back. I'm sat on the floor, so keep it smelling, okay, boss. <laughs> Simon's flying the A320, but not to Lukla. He's just departing uh, alongside us and off to Dubai. So again, Aerosoft have included three different checklists and they all say something different. Uh, so I'm, I'm following this one uh, for now. We're going to turn the right fuel boost pump to on. We are going to engage the right starter. Ooh, have I got a beacon light on or anything? Yes, I hang. hang uh, let's put the anti-collision on. Anti-collision on. Um, and we want to check that the NG is uh, is rising. Oh, hang on. Mm, don't panic. Have I actually engaged it? No, I haven't. There we go. Oh, that's a good noise. That's a good noise. And we're looking for uh, the right oil pressure to start rising, which it is. We're looking for the uh, NG and the GG to start rising. Um, and when we get to 14% uh, on the right NG, then we can introduce fuel. That'll do us. Right fuel is now on. You've already said your goodbyes, good. MSA of 21,100 north of the airport is very reassuring of our safety. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, going to, we're going to turn around and come back south fairly sharpish. That's the plan. Um, they, they do do a slightly different route when they, fly, when they take off from runway two. Uh, but I can't find it, so we're gonna we're gonna basically make a. In fact, let's have a look at the chart before I commit to anything drastic. Blimey, yeah, twenty-one thousand one hundred. Yeah, uh, we're going to make a left downwind, I think, to intercept the uh, the radial. So yeah, we'll take up take off, turn left and left again, climbing twelve thousand, and, uh, and and then intercept the VOR radial that we wanted. The amount of phrases you should never hear your pilot say is staggering. Staggering, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very loud. It is very loud. All right, let's start the left engine. Have a quick look at the props. See if they've done anything with the animations. There, they have. I think that's looking a lot better. And in goes the fuel. Oh, you're joking. There's not an easy A320 flying to Luke, is it? Well, I tell you what, I might end up disconnecting from that sim, to be honest with you. 
I can't be dealing with easy jets flying along and, and ruining things. We'll see. We'll see if he... If maybe he'll be long gone before us. But if he's near us, I think I'll just disconnect. Um, right. How's the throttle up sound? Let's listen. Still very clearly three sounds, three separate sounds being switched from one to the other, but they're, they're blended a bit better than they were, I would say. William, hello boss, welcome. Oh, is it you or the MSFS pilot in the EasyJet? I, I, I don't, I, must you? Must you? <laughs> I, I mean, you will die. And you will spoil the immersion quite a lot, so I would honestly prefer it. There's no easy way to say this, but I'd honestly prefer it that you didn't fly along than you flew along in an easy J A320. Bring bring a caravan or a, or a piper or something that can actually fit into Luclu, and you're more than welcome. But yeah, it's, it, you know, I can't stop you. It's uh, it's not down to me to say who flies what, but I'd, I'd prefer it if you didn't come along in an easy A320. Um, any idea why the prop RPM gauge is different for each engine? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I've been curious, particularly about this yellow... Why, why is there this yellow arc on this one but not on that one? No idea at all. Um, your friend travelled to Lukla more than ten times. Really? Did he, did he then go on to climb Everest, Boomslang? What about reverse thrust? Well, we... Uh, let's have a listen. There's your reverse. Also better, I would say. Also better. It's going very well, William, thank you. Other than the fact that we're flying to almost certain death. But yeah, other than that, it's going it's going swimmingly. How are you? <laughs> right, after start checks, fine. Generators can come on. Uh Yeah, and I believe they actually should go to on via reset because that's what the main checklist says. Uh, engine instruments should be within limits, and I can tell you that they are happily. Caution lights should be appropriate. Um, oh, we'll, we'll get the aft boost pump on. We forgot about that. So the only one we should have showing is pneumatic load pressure, compass and gyro as well. This is a sim; they're always going to be aligned. Altimeter and clocks. Let's set the altimeter to the local pressure in sim one zero one five. And uh, anti-collision and position lights are on. Right, taxi checks, brakes. Gyros and... Uh, brakes will be fine. Gyros and turn indicator will be fine. Okay, you're great just walking home. Short day for you, isn't it, boss? Assuming you're coming home from school. Video Games Maniac, welcome. You assume if it's like the DC-6, they model it off a real plane or are trying to mimic that since the DC-6 has some different gauges and so on. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have modeled it off the real plane. I don't... There's no reason why they would design two separate gauges if they don't have to. I just... Yeah, I don't understand why. Bishwedges, welcome! Coast push back tug right ahead. Yeah, there's been some... So basically, when it spawns you in, it faces you the wrong way. Um, and... So I've, uh, I've slewed it to face the right way. And yeah, this pushback tug doesn't know what to do with itself. Hello, Bishwedgish. Welcome. First thrusters sound a bit better, not a sudden. Agreed. Uh, I don't know if I've got the H135 enabled. Are you, are you in the H135? I mean, this is one extreme to the other, isn't it? This is... Uh, so we've got one person wants to fly the A320 into Lukla, which is impossible. And we've got someone else who doesn't even want to land a fixed-wing aeroplane. Turn <laughs> them <laughs> slap. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up everything we need. Uh, so we're going to set the altitude to 12,000 feet, which will be our cruising altitude. It's below the transition altitude, so uh, we won't have to reset our pressure. And we're going to tune the KTM VOR. Uh, I'm going to show you our route. Uh, there's a very helpful guide published by Nepal Vac, 
which covers basically everything that you need to know to fly this route as realistically as possible. Uh, where's my display capture? There it is. Yes, so this is our route and what we're going to do is we're going to take off and we're going to track the KTM VOR114 radial outbound to 42 nautical miles. Then we're going to turn left heading 101 to intercept the radial 109 outbound to 74 nautical miles. Then we're going to be looking for VNLD Airport and that is where we make our turn directly towards Lukla to the north heading 004. And then we descend and we, uh, we look, look for the airport, fly entirely visually towards a mountain and make a last minute right turn to land. So it's going to be a very, very, uh, it's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a lot going on. What are some considerations you have to make for high altitude landings? You have to remember, <laughs> you have to remember that the plane just doesn't really have enough power. So you're going to need quite a lot of throttle and you really don't want to get too slow. Those are the main considerations. We do boss in the guide that I sent everyone. Dear, oh dear, I don't know why I bother. I don't know why I bother. No, hang on, I've got to look it up myself. I'm sure it is in the guide. If it isn't in the guide, my apologies for casting aspersions there. Uh, I definitely tuned it in yesterday, but yet I can't see it. No, no, my apologies, Voita. I don't think it's there. Actually, I think it is. I think it's on that chart at the very top. One one three decimal two, boss. One one three decimal two. This is where I have to remember how I actually tune the booming thing. I think it's this one, isn't it? One one three decimal two. There we are. That's set on. I thought these synced, but they apparently don't. This must be VOR um, Nav 2 we're sorting out here. 113 decimal 2 is the only VOR we need. There we go. 113 decimal 2. And our initial course is going to be... Well, the initial radial is going to be 114 outbound. So let's set that now. No, that way, where the arrow is. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Turbo Piper has 20,000 foot sea. Oh, does it? Oh, that's pretty. It's fine then, isn't it? There's 111, 110 rather, and 12, 112, set. And two more, and that'll be 114 set, which is what we actually want. <laughs> yeah, that's right, okay. And our initial heading, what's the runway heading here? Let me just check my charts. In fact, we won't bother setting runway heading because we're going to do a circuit straight away. So it's heading to, uh, 022, but we're going to come round to the right to 0 to 202. To the left, actually. I decided we're doing a left circuit for no real reason, didn't I? I think because the terrain's lower, so it seems to make more sense. Can I just say that this is a particularly pog and delightful change from our typical airline IFR stuff? Thank you, Alice. You absolutely can say that. I'm very pleased. Yes, I am doing the turnaround. Yes, I am. 
You landed a bis jet at Luke yesterday and it's very difficult. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I, what's the Cessna 5T5? I can't picture that. Two, zero, one, two, that'll do us. Okay. So what we're going to do is taxi via hotel. Hotel. Oh, this is not clear. This chart is not clear. Let's have a look at 109A. Foxtrot. Oh, I don't blimmin' know. We're at Delta 17. Delta 17 will be going Hotel Foxtrot. Hotel Foxtrot and Echo. I think. Kathmandu traffic. Yeti Airlines 145 taxiing to uh, holding point Echo. Runway 02 via Hotel and Foxtrot and Echo. Right. It's nothing else for it. We've got to go. Brakes off. Taxi light can come on. I will turn the pito heat on so we don't forget later. And let's get taxiing. No, we're just using KTM VOR, that's it. Oh, C25C! Yeah, but he didn't say C25C, did he? He said something else, I thought. 525, oh, okay, yeah, maybe that said, um... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what the 525 is. There are an awful lot of pushback tugs just having a party out here. <laughs> It's exciting, isn't it? Oh, you can't hear me on Unicom, boss. It's probably because I haven't tuned Unicom, boss. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Can't be expected to tune a nav radio and a com radio, you know? I don't know what that noise is. Does anyone know what that noise is? I thought it was a flat noise, but it isn't. Kathmandu, Kathmandu traffic, Yeti Airlines 145 taxiing to runway 02 via Foxtrot and Echo. Quite a lot of throttle to get it going. Oh, the CJ1, nice. Which sim is that in? Exorcist moment there, yeah. <laughs> Escorting us all to our death. <laughs> I'm gonna really, I'm gonna try really, really hard not to kill you, and I, I might succeed. Let's let's think positive. And I will be changing the weather if if it doesn't improve as we get towards Lukla. Um, because obviously this is a VFR flight and it can't be done uh, if you're not visual. It's not cheating, it's just impossible. It's the desperate moves of the passengers. <laughs> Come on, you've still got another 30 minutes of life left, Jenny. Let's not get overly melodramatic, eh? So takeoff trip. There's Simon. It's a nice looking livery actually, I like it. And 
and uh, thank you for bringing in all of my passengers off to Lukla from Dubai, but still nothing. Kathmandu traffic, Yeti Airlines 145 radio check. Thank you. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, Yeti Airlines 145 is taxiing via Foxtrot Echo to runway 02. Coming from the person who said, welcome to the last 40 minutes of your life. Yeah, but you need to enjoy these last 40 minutes. Kathmandu traffic, easy one to do. Line over to Pine Runway 02 for eastbound departure for Kwame for over 120. Kathmandu Traffic. Uh, Kathmandu Traffic, your path for Mike 3 Tango is backtracking. The runway should be on the track here. What? Got one backtracking and one. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I'm going to disconnect from that soon. There we are. Right, let's do our uh, checklist. Run up checks. We're not going to do a full run up. But we are going to arm the auto feather. And what's the weather like? Do we need anti ice? I've never used anti ice on this plane. Um, so prop feathering is not something you'd use generally unless you lost an engine. So the only time you use it in normal operations is when you're shutting down or about to start up. In which case, yes, it should always be full feather. Right, what else have I missed in the chat? We're interested to see spool up sounds. Many people shouting Aerosoft. I have one thing to say for this. Stop shouting because Aerosoft normally don't make study level airports, aircraft and complete airports. They intend it for the market you can't afford. Yeah, it's an interesting point of view. The sounds have improved in this update as we found earlier, um, but they're still not perfect, but they're definitely better than they were. You'll, we'll hear as we go along. Um, off that. No, it's just that sim, it, it, to my mind, is, is for realistic operations and uh, not for doing ridiculous things like flying A320s into nuclear and certainly not for taking off when there's already someone on the runway. Um, so it's just, it's not for me when it's like this. Oh, no worries, for Tim. No, it's fine, it's fine. I'm going to stay offline for this one. You, you carry on, for Tim. It's not a problem. Um, Okie dokie. Run up checks. Parking brake set. Auto feather is armed. Anti ice. Anti ice. Anti ice. Anti ice. Stab de ice. De icer boots. Let's turn those to auto. Is there any like heating? I don't know. I don't know how to use the anti-ice. There it is. Anyway, we'll stick our bleed air on. <laughs> uh, we've got our heading set in the autopilot. So before takeoff checks, fuel quantity is fine. Fuel boost pumps are on. Rudder trim tabs We are set 10 degrees. We did that. Uh, flight instruments are looking absolutely beautiful. Nav and comm radios are set. Propeller levers are full forward. Should be. Double check. Yep, they are. Auto feather has been selected. Take off flaps, we probably don't need them, but I've never actually read anywhere that you can take off with zero flaps on this. So we will set them to 10 degrees. Um, engine instruments are within limits. Pito heat we've already turned on. anti ice may be set, we hope. Flight controls are fine. Transponder, uh, we don't need the flying offline now. Landing lights can come on. Were they already on? I don't remember turning them, but yes, I, I have, I guess. Or the switch is the wrong way around. Okay, switch, switch appears to be the wrong way around. Because that down should be the off position, shouldn't it? Anyway, fine, that's done. Uh, we can probably turn our taxi light off now, though it's not explicit about that. 
Uh, caution lights, again, they are appropriate. Runway and heading checked. And uh, that's pretty much us ready to go. Good morning, Santiago. Oh, intake anti-ice at the top. Ah, yes, thank you. That's probably all we need now, isn't it? At least you have someone who wants to build planes which are flyable with good FPS like Aerosoft. For an Airbus, it's really good. Now the FS lamps is also improving in some external textures. The FS lamps? It is actually. It's looking better than it used to. Good morning, Santiago. Welcome. Uh, yes, I've disconnected from that sim, yeah. Right, I think we're ready. I, I have to say, I have to say, uh, overall, I like the tw Twin Otter. I think it's a great plane, but I do wish it was better. You want off too late, Jenny Soz. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's all going to be fine, everyone, remember. It's all going to be fine. Here we go. the hard bit done. I think we can all relax now. Bye-bye, Kathmandu. Right, we'll raise our flaps. The sounds have improved. Yeah, they have. <laughs> Take your conventional unruly passengers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make a tight, and I mean tight, uh, left downwind and uh, sorry, left uh, crosswind and left downwind. Shouldn't really be doing more than 15 degrees of bank, but uh, considering the circumstances, I'm not going to worry too much about it. We're in the air. It will be. It'll all be fine. It'll all be absolutely fine. Nampilan, welcome. No, no, we've just taken off. You haven't missed the flight. Yeah, the sounds are a lot better so far. And we're going to hand fly it for a little bit because it's fun. And also it's nice to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a feel for the plane given what's to come. I don't know. I've never used turbine sound studio sounds. Have you got them in um, in P3D and things, HK? Uh, what size monitor have I got? I can't remember. It's an ultra wide. <laughs> it's in the video description, though. It's in the video description what I've got. Now we're gonna. We're flying at twelve thousand feet today. It is sufficient. Missed the best part of this flight, the takeoff. <laughs> what they might have done with the sounds is used IOL recordings rather than full sound design or augmented sound, if that was the case. Yeah, yeah, they might have done. P3D and the old FSX. Ah, OK, I'll have to look them up. I've never been that fussed by sounds, to be honest, but uh, yeah. 
Sean Sack, welcome, thank you very much for the sub. Oh, have you been to Nepal, Seedla? I've never been, I'd love to go though. Just noticed I've totally missed the, <laughs> missed the outbound radial that I was heading towards. But I don't know if it's just suddenly jumped because it's a little bit, uh, it certainly used to be that, that tracking outbound radials from VORs did not work properly in this plane as uh, the corporate pilot dad found on his, uh, his thorough test of it. Yeah, I, I did, I've done it a few times. I've only done it once in this aircraft, which I did yesterday. Um, and it went, it went okay once I found the airport. And I think I now know where the airport is, so it might go okay again today, possibly. My monitor is a little bit too small, but I am in a uh, I'm, I'm I'm in a very tight space with my uh, with my sibling at the moment. Okay, what we're going to do now is stick the autopilot on, and we're going to put that in heading and VS mode. thousand feet per minute up to 12,000 we'll have a little look outside we are picking up a little bit of ice here and yeah I, I, certainly if the weather's like this near Lukla I don't think it's going to be a goer so I might have to change it uh, we'll turn the landing lights off and I'm going to have a quick look at all of my icing options up here is there something for the windscreen? Not that I can see. Oh, window heat is on the top, right-hand side, top of the window, near the condition levers. Okay. Ah. Yes, thank you, boss. Once we get close to intercepting this, I'm going to try and engage um, nav mode on the autopilot and see if it works. As I say, it didn't yesterday, but it's been updated since then. Cerebellum, hello! Long time no see, how are you? We did have some icing, but thanks to Paul's uh, expert, expert tips, it's now gone. I mean, put it this way, Gibi, if we can see down the valley, we'll do it in live weather. If we can't, then we won't. So we should now, we should be able to engage now, and it should follow this outbound course. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Awesome. They've, they've, they've done something very good here. Hello, nice to see you as well. Flying, you think, one of your favourite flights out there. Oh, good. Well, I hope I do it justice. Imagine all the IRL pilots flying to Lukla wish they could change the weather with the slide. Yeah, well, they'd just come back. If they got there and found it was in cloud, they'd, uh, they'd come back to Kathmandu, which I don't want to do. OK, so next step is we are flying to... 42 nautical miles, 42 DME, which we're going to keep an eye on here on the distance. We're 8 miles at the moment, so we've got a little way to go yet. 
and we'll just bring our uh, propeller levers back slightly. Believe it only feel better. <laughs> Thank you, Gooby. We'll bring our power back to cruise. A sensible cruise power setting to keep it at around about 140 knots. And we'll just really hope the weather improved. I did it yesterday in live weather and it was fine. Um, it would be nice to see some mountains. Anyway, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Well, just did some CJ4 flying again this weekend. It's been quite well. Ah, is it working well? Astro is at. Welcome. How are you? Thank you for the sun. I do want to return off, yeah, after landing at Nuclear, but I do want to land at <laughs> I do want to land at Bradley, hello. Welcome. How are you? Snowed here in Rhodes for the first time after 35 years. Wow! Don't know if we're lucky or, or not. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine it snowing in Rhodes. Didn't know that ever happened. I'm just going to turn the sim audio down a little bit because it's kind of, kind of loud, isn't it? That's a bit better, a bit more manageable had no issues, no crashes and no temp bugs. Ah, I'm really pleased. Did it capture an ILS okay for you? Because the last two flights I've done in it, that's been a bit of an issue, but they may they may well have fixed it. I haven't really uh, kept my eye on the ball of what's going on at Working Title, to be honest with you, lately. Yeah, I'm very well, Bradley. I do wish sometimes there was a middle ground between the presets and live weather, something that doesn't require tweaking the presets to get variation. Yeah, I know what you mean. The twatter's treating me well. Yeah, I've been enjoying it a lot. It does have a few bugs and the sounds aren't perfect, but they're a lot better in this latest update, a lot, lot better. Um, we're now able to follow an outbound course from a, a VOR, which we weren't yesterday. So yeah, I think it's really getting there now. I think it's a nice, well, I think it's there, to be honest with you. Those are the main two issues that it had, and they've uh, they fixed them. So, yeah, I'd still like the sounds to be improved a little bit more. So there's a, they're not just transitioning between different notes, but there's actually variation in the pitch. But you can't have everything. Uh, I can't remember if I said hello to you in Indonesia, Optimum Prime. Welcome. If I didn't, you did have to spend like two hours updating your sim and mods, right? Right, okay, yeah. It captured the Alice every time, good. I think I probably just need to update it. Yeah, the outside view is incredibly loud. Hence hence me turning down the sim audio. You've flown the Twin Otter, it's a very nice plane. It is, isn't it? You're hugging your dog, very nice. What sort of dog have you got, Green Bond? How to create a flight plan for this plane? Do we use the MSFS standard flight plan? You could use either. We're flying VOR, VOR, VFR today, so we're not, we don't have a flight plan. Uh, no, I'm going to stick at uh, 12,000 uh, HK. 12,000 is sufficient for the flight. Don't worry, I, I know this to be true. You need help. You're in between buying the Shanghai Airport and the Vienna one. Which one would you recommend more? I don't have Shanghai, but Vienna's lovely. I don't know anything about Shanghai, I'm afraid. Uh, you think there's a bug where it doesn't actively switch nav? You have to press nav transfer in the CJ4 to capture ILS. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's... Uh, oh, yes, you're right. No, they did sort out nav to nav transfer a little while back, didn't they? So, yeah, maybe, maybe something has gone wrong there. Oh, yeah, Alex. I was in heading both times. I think if I'd been in nav, you think it would have captured? Should be able to capture from heading, though. Shouldn't it? Yeah, I'd, yeah, get it, Riley. Get it. No, Charles. I was talking about um, I was talking about the CJ for last couple of CJ4 flights I did in the IFR flights. Andreas, hello. I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? And Aviation Rowley, welcome. You did your first manual startup in a medium-sized plane, A310. Oh, good. Did it go well? X plane, I take it. 
Should we have a quick look at the after takeoff checklist? I sort of feel I know what I'm doing there. Climb checklist. Yeah, done that. Cruise checks. Yeah, done that. Descent checks. It's going to be fine. I'm not. I'm not turning the seatbelt sign off on this short of a flight. It's not worth it. A mini Saint Bernoodle, mix of Saint Bern Bernard and Poodle. Oh wow, that sounds gorgeous. I'm going to have to Google this. I love both those breeds. Mini. Saint Bardoodle. Bardoodle. Oh, how sweet! That is a lovely, lovely dog. Lovely breed. I think the Twin Otter is worth getting, yeah. It's not it's not the very best plane in its class out there. It's not quite as good, for example, as the Kodiak. It doesn't feel quite as smooth. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And other than the sounds in flight, it is pretty nice. And even the sounds aren't bad now they've, uh, now they've updated it. So we're 25 nautical miles away now from the VOR, and I just have to remember to keep an eye on this, because we're looking for 42 DME. Oh, you play FSX, right? I didn't know there was an A310 for FSX. Trying to prepare for Hum 2 at the same time, yeah. Concentrate, Charles. Don't let me distract you. I'd feel awful. I'd feel awful if it didn't go to plan because you were watching me pretend to fly a plane. <laughs> Do you have to go around all clouds IRL when you fly VFR? Yeah, pretty much. Not sure if automatic nav to nav transfer happens when in heading mode. Right, but I, this was... Oh! Oh! I just get what you mean now, Alex. So... Had I not switched from, um, had I not switched nav source, you're probably right. Automatic nav to nav transfer wouldn't happen if you were in heading mode. But and if I didn't switch it, that could well explain it. But I thought I did. I'd love to test, but the number of flights you get to do is so small. You're not sure you want to miss a landing. Yeah, don't blame you. Uh, you always used to switch from pig needle nav to green for ILS automatically, but after a recent sim update, you have to do it manually. Ah, okay. Mm. Come on, you need to have a wee. You need to have a... Go, Trolls, go and have a wee. Neither your revision nor my flight are important enough not to go for a wee. <laughs> it's only about uh, half an hour in total, Plane Boy 15. 30 nautical miles. The departure out of Kathmandu in a 77 ton A320 is scary. Only thing that's scarier than that is seeing an easy A320 near in, near in Asia. Yes, well, hence the disconnect, Simon. <laughs> 12,000 foot's fine. You need to trust me, you people. I know what I'm doing. This flight is usually flying around 12,000 foot. You're just scrolling through the PowerPoint because that's all there really is. Oh, okay. You think you're going to wait and see how good the PMG 737 before you get the twat because if it is, you're sticking to X-Plane. Right, fair enough. I'm not really flying proper VFR heading into those clouds. No, but I would put money on this being something they'd do in real life if they've got VOR navigation as well. Don't know. Oh, I see you can't go to the WC. No, no, you know, you, if, yes, that's true. That is true. I'd forgotten I'd left the seatbelt sign. We'll be starting our descent fairly soon, Tolls. So you'll just have to hold it in. <laughs> We're messing around in your physics class and people were throwing glitter at you saying you're a little princess. How charming. Did the teacher not do something about that? Exploding blood is the leading cause of death among gaming teams. <laughs> Flying at, you're flying at 110, yeah, okay, cool. There is, but I won't turn the seatbelt sign off for people to use it, boss. Is there one? In fact, is there one? No, there is not one. Sorry, Trolls. Even if I release the seatbelt sign, there's nowhere for you to go pee. Uh, let's have a look, Nicky, and see how you do. Ooh, 
Nice. It's a funny looking plane, isn't it? Does look like the sort of plane that's built for this sort of route though. Very nice. Yeah, I guess you could, Charles, I guess you could. <laughs> Just open the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're only at 12,000 feet, probably could. <laughs> Lukla is your country and Nepal is our pride. Oh, welcome, welcome. Do you live, where, where in Nepal do you live, Kushal? Your teacher's kind of useless, you don't mind though, it's quite funny. Right, okay, that's the main thing. <laughs> Imagine landing in an abandoned airport for no reason. I can imagine that. Yes. Matthew, hello. Just the break you need while enduring a bad day at work. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I hope it's. Um, I hope it doesn't end in uh, fire and destruction. Right. Need to keep an eye on the distance now, uh, because we are nearly at 42 nautical miles. And then we're going to make a turn to the left, heading 101, and intercept the 109 radial outbound. And because we're on nav mode, we can actually preset that heading. It's nice doing a good bit of raw data navigation. We are 42, back into heading mode, and we'll switch this to 109. And we'll go back into nav mode once we're uh, ready to intercept it. We should be able to do it now, now we're on intercept heading, I think. Might turn us left to do it, but that's okay, I don't mind that. Yeah, that's a bit silly what the plane's doing there, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's a bit silly. <laughs> the autopilot's not quite where it should be, I feel. There's another airport not far down the valley from Luke, the planes might divert to. Yeah, possibly. MSFS really blurs the line between reality and video game. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Crash to send it to 10k after all if you lose press. Yeah. Okay, so we want to track the uh, 109 radial outbound to 74 nautical miles. I may have already said that. At which point we're looking for VNLD airport, and then we're going to turn left to 104. Are you going to turn us onto course, Mr. Plane, or not? Willie, hello, welcome. Nice to see you. Have a good work call, boss. Yeah, we do, we do, Charles, yeah. It's human performance, right? You're a junior animator, nice. Fair point. Fair point on the yaw damper. 
don't think that's what's causing this, but yeah, I had not turned it on. Just going to check the local pressure. Still 1015, okay. Yeah, I, th I thought it was, th I think I might have accidentally said it was $30, but yeah, it's 36 euros, including tax. I might have been looking at it without tax or something. Christopher! <laughs> Christopher, thank you, boss, for the resub to Club Filbert. Um, Club Filbert Silver, 12 months of membership. We are indeed off to evangelise Club Filbert to the poor Netherlands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we I think I have to do that one. I think I have to do it. Satira, very well, thanks. How are you? Thank you for the suggestion of this route, Satir. In fact, I'll hold off on the thanks. I'll hold off on the thanks until we get down safely. But, <laughs> so far it's going very well. Twirls! Three months of bronze! And also, and also a Club Filbert Twitch uh, subscriber. Thank you very much indeed, boss. Um, much appreciated. Jay Gertner, thank you for the sub. Welcome. Good for you, Aussie MSFS pilot. We're not strictly doing VOR to VOR. No, we are doing. We're, we're flying. We're flying a VFR route, but we're using a single VOR, various radials from it, to aid our navigation. Because obviously, I do not know this route well enough to fly it visually. You wish YouTube would remind you. Have you got notifications turned on? Because it should do. Ah, oh, you don't have Twitch. Oh, okay, no worries, boss. So far, it's been going very well. We've, but we haven't slammed into a mountain, Jenny. As well, you know. <laughs> mm. Do, by the way, if uh, do come and follow me over on Twitch. I do half my streams over there these days, so uh, you can see a hundred percent more streams if you follow me there as well. What? <laughs> I have no words now, Pilan, other than what. <laughs> oh, haven't, okay. <laughs> About eight minutes till certain death. <laughs> I'm Karis, thank you very much for uh, following on Twitch. You just got Ljubljana from Scenic Roots, but the VDGS does not work. I installed the system, but nothing happened. Oh, that's odd. I just ran the installer and it worked. He seems quite helpful though. I'm sure he'd be able to, uh, the developer would be able to help you sort it out. Isn't this beautiful though? Just lovely. Clouds are clearing up quite nicely as well. I might require admin privileges. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. Kefra, is this someone else I haven't seen for ages? Welcome, how are you? Yeah, we can look outside more. We can look outside more. I know, I know, it's so loud. It's about right inside though, volume wise, I think. Will we be able to see Everest? It's a very good question, and I don't know the answer. Let me have a quick look at uh, Melanta. Don't know. 
I honestly don't know. I guess we should be able to see it somewhere in the distance because it is the closest airport. You do have to love the beautiful mountains, it's true. Yeah, he did. Uh, I cannot answer your other two questions though, Tree to <laughs> I'll do my best, Andres. Can you open the door in flight on the skydiving twatter? I haven't flown the skydiving twatter, but I bet you can. I bet you can. Have to love the yep. uh, Can you suggest? Can I suggest route? If yes, can you fly in Indonesian sky? I've, I have flown into Indonesia before, uh, Astros, and I probably will again. Um, yeah, I probably will again. But if you have a look at my YouTube uh, back catalogue, you'll find uh, a, a flight from um, Bali. Oh, into Bali. From Jakarta. In fact, I think I did the return. Yeah, I remember when we flew to Paro that I just couldn't... Uh, I just couldn't spot it. There is a skydiving to water. Yeah, so you've got float variant, you've got ski variant, you've got tundra tyres, you've got wheels, and you've got wheels skydiving variant with various cargo options as well. 67 nautical miles, and we're looking for 74 DME from the uh, VOR. If you remember correctly, Everest is like northeast, about 40 kilometres away. Okay. In that case, I think I probably would have spotted it on the approach yesterday if I was going to be able to spot it. Should be hidden. There we are. Yeah, all in the one package, yeah. I haven't yet flown the float, either, either, of the, either the float or the um, ski variant. Don't really know how. I, I might do some reading and give it a go at some point on a stream. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't yet subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would. Uh, and also, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, click the thumbs up button. It really makes a huge difference to, uh, to people finding my channel. Sold. You're going to buy it, Riley? You see, I get, I get your desire to stick with X-Plane, and I get your desire to just stick to one sim. But I don't think we're going to be in a position anytime soon where one sim has everything we want. I think we're always going to have multiple sims, probably. And especially something like the Twin Otter, you're not going to need to buy much additional stuff, do you know what I mean? I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Seventy-one, and because we're on nav mode, I'm going to get ready and set heading uh, zero zero four, so we can just switch to heading mode. And then we'll do some manual flying, I think. Send it down the old valley. Here we are, zero zero four preset. And we're looking for that airport. That's where we make our turn when we're a beam that. There's seventy four. And I think that's the airport down there. Pretty sure. Yes. Okay, so let's turn into heading mode. Bang on 75. And then from this point on, it's all visual. Now, these clouds are sort of 50-50 for me in terms of whether we should switch off light weather. We'll see what the actual valley itself looks like. Yeah, exactly, Simon. If you follow the river in the valley up and to the right, sticking to the main valleys, you'll eventually get to Everest. Ah, right! And that's why you invest in three sims in it. Exactly, exactly. Mm. 
Okay, I think we'll leave live weather on. I think there are enough gaps in the clouds that we should be okay. Famous last words, but there we are. Hello, Oliver, welcome. You really only have X-Plane for the better aircraft. Yeah, yeah, same reason I have P3D. No, no, no need to break realism. <laughs> but the question is, Treed we went. The question is, if real world pilots saw the valley looking like this, would they land or would they turn back? Should be visual all the way. I don't know when their X-Plane 12 is coming out, no, but I bet someone in here might have an idea. We should be okay, film a 22 surely for crashing in Canada. <laughs> Now the thing here is, it's making it slightly difficult for me to identify the right valley. Are we definitely, I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's this one to the left. Pretty sure. This year maybe, oh it's one of those is it? You can't fly into Lukla on instruments though. It's it's visual only. It's a VFR only airport. Sir, I would like to die on Everest, not on this plane. <laughs> well, you should have thought of that before you got on board, boss. <laughs> should get a lovely view before we die. Exactly. Exactly. That's the attitude. Need a bit more of that in here. sure it's this one right here though. Right, we're going to hand fly it now. And we want to descend slowly to 9,500 feet. And we want to be at 9,500 feet before we make our turn to final. Hello Bailey, welcome. Ah, oh, congratulations Generic Pilot 1. Well done. Where did you, where did you take it? Yeah, this valley looks right. This valley looks very right. And the cloud is uh, soon going to be above us. So that's good. Yes, Luke Labos. I'll log on to Vatsim if the easy jet's gone. Just taking off from Innsbruck, quite a bit of turbulence. Oh, it often is bumpy around there. Where are you flying to? Descend slowly, yes, please. <laughs> Greetings from SI 7290. 744 freighter from Melbourne to Auckland. Oh, nice, nice. P3D. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure of if I if I have to do human uh, factors for my PPL, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I thought I did and now I'm less certain. Can ba I barely, uh, barely even scratched the surface of air law, which is my first exam.
I love P3D as well. I did log off. Yeah, there was an EasyJet A320 flying to Luxo, and I was like, nah. This is not why I use that sim. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Okay, cool. You have law on Friday, but a lot of it is self-study. Right, okay. Do you know, I'm pleasantly surprised by how little turbulence there is here. I would expect particularly, well, around the mountains anyway, but particularly in MSFS for this to be really, really bumpy, and it, it isn't, fortunately. We no longer need any anti-ice because we're out of the clouds. But also, I'm not happy fiddling with those switches while I'm flying towards a mountain, so let's just leave it. <laughs> just update the pressure. Is 9,500 and we'll get our first stage of flaps out. It needs a lot, a lot, a lot of trimming. It needs a lot of trimming. I just remembered I didn't set, reset my rudder trim either. Yeah, it does need a lot of trimming. The second you change the power, it wants to pitch differently. Realism at its finest. <laughs> it's a Victor November Lima Kilo. do is turn the oil damper off. Landing lights can come back on. And our aiming point is here, I believe. And that's the point at which we want to turn final. White arc to get the remainder of our flaps out. We're slightly high. Handy tap trim buttons and wheel for a year it is. Flaps have a big effect on speed in this aircraft. I'm ever so worried about missing the airport. Ever so worried about it. And yeah, obviously after each flap extension you need to trim quite a lot as well. It is. What are we going to do on an engine out here? We're going to die. <laughs> yes, it is. It is very, very, very scary. There's no two ways about it. And 
we're going to make a very gentle turn around to final now. Because of the uphill slope on this runway, I've actually found that you don't really need reverse thrust. a little bit of a crosswind from the right, a little bit, not too much though. And this is where I find it very, very fiddly getting the power setting right. And we're not going for a butter, put it that way, we're getting it down. of a stutter there. Anyway, here we are. Welcome to Lukla. <laughs> that wasn't bad, let's be honest. That wasn't bad. No butter into Lukla. Butter at Lukla is madness. Oh, hello. Oh, I need to... I can't get, can't get up the slope. <laughs> Yeah, that was all right, wasn't it? That was okay. Hushed with your roof landing emojis, Satira. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> As I say, it's very much a tyres on tarmac sort of an airport. Right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, HK. We're not done yet, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Toke her up the slope, yeah. <laughs> it's their maintenance available. I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> that New Year's cull. It's not too late, you know. It's not too late. Oh, my blooming rudder pedals are sliding all over the floor, which is not helpful. Here we are. <laughs> right, everyone mop the sweat off your brows. Dry your, dry your tears. We're down. We're down. <laughs> Okie dokie. So let's get some, uh, some stuff sorted out up here. Strobe light. Come off. Oh, I must have already done it. Uh, landing lights are off. Taxi light is off. We're going to feather our props. It's not working. And we're going to cut our fuel. And we'll let these poor bastards off the plane. <laughs> Lovely bit of parking. Lovely bit of parking. Oh, we are going back. We are going back. Yeah, everyone can get off for a, a breather and or some whiskey and a fag. Including me, because <laughs> that was stressful. That was stressful. Right, let me just see what's going on, Volanta. All right, let's connect to Vatsim. I can't see that easy jet. Hopefully he's gone. And we should be able to see Nikki. He'll probably show up as a generic, but anyway. Okay, how was that? Yeah, so that, oh Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 
done a poor job of bodging the model, model matching, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, Nikki. You're a, you're a horrible, horrible A330. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect again. It's not your fault, though, boss. <clears throat> right, what else have I missed in the chat? Never doubted me. Thank you, Sir Lamb. Appreciate it. You can land bigger plane in Luca perfectly. Lol. Okay, Astro Aizan. Okay. <laughs> Weirdo. Uh, no, but there are free parts all over the mountain. <laughs> Free chiropractor appointment included in each flight to Lukla, right? <laughs> oh dear. Looked good to me on the tarmac. No landing at anybody. What do you mean no landing at anybody? <laughs> Welcome to Oofkla. <laughs> we landed. Have to reserve a parking spot in Victorville for me to park. Right, right. You're all being banned. I've had enough of this. <laughs> Taking off from here must be a bit like ski jumping. Yes, it is. It is. It is cerebellum. You breathed and went for nature's call. Nice. I think now I'll fly the CJ1. Good luck, Nikki. Good luck. <laughs> so I just want to say, for those of you who thought that was a little firm, um, <laughs> that in fact, what we had there was a landing rate of positive 325 feet per minute positive 325 feet per minute so screw you all shall we go to Paro now instead no <laughs> uh, that's the biggest damn piper I've ever seen yeah I know but, 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 landing looked okay to me a big issue is the lack of finish I know landing at anybody like you did oh yeah 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 yes <laughs> um no worries, Riley. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. But fortunately... Ooh, still got the beacon on. Uh, but fortunately, you were all wrong. And, uh, you know, if zero is butter, a landing rate of a sub 200 negative is butter, then 325 positive must be basically like being... I don't know, like landing on a stack of feather-stuffed mattresses. Positive isn't you landing the plane, it's the landing rising to me. I know that. <laughs> the LVFR static aircraft pack puts a twin otter in the middle of the apron. Oh, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Thank you. I think, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Very happy with it. <laughs> okay, then. Let me get a drink. And then we'll go back. And I don't actually have... Uh, I guess we'll just do it the reverse of what we did to get here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Back in a tick. In fact, I might... Yeah, no, I won't make a cup of tea. I'll just get a soft drink. Break. There we go. Right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Are you off HK? No worries. See you later. Okay, see you, Astro Aizan. Uh, welcome back, Lemo Wonders What. Plus five, three, two, five, ascending to the heavens. <laughs> right, now, before we get set up for the way back, I do think, credit where credit's due, a sober have done an awesome job with this scenery. You know, where else, where else in any other sim would you have a default scenery in the base edition 
that is as well modelled as this. It's just stunning. It's the Buddha Lodge. Got a bit of a uh, bit of transparency over here at the terminal building signage. It's really good. It's really good. Also, I do need to calm down a little bit after that landing before we fly back. <laughs> and they've done a good job of clearing the snow off the apron and the runway as well. Positive landing rate equals above sky gods. <laughs> Hassan, see you later. We are flying back. I don't know if everyone's aware of this. You may just have other things to do. But we are returning to Kathmandu uh, momentarily. Uh, with added prayer flags too, yeah. Crisp textures, agreed, Bailey, agreed. Uh, pardon me, absolutely. And uh, I haven't also, also, while we're here, I haven't talked about Club Filbert yet. Now, Club Filbert is my uh, YouTube membership program, which allows you to support the channel by giving a small donation each month. Uh, there are three tiers, Club Filbert, Bronze, Silver and Gold. Bronze starts at £1.99 a month. You get access to uh, exclusive members-only Discord channels. You get custom emojis, a members badge next to your name in chat and YouTube comments. Uh, Club Filbert Silver is the next tier up and you get, as well as all of that, you can join us on our monthly Club Filbert Silver uh, group flights, uh, members slash members only live streams, which are always a lot of fun. And then the top tier is gold, which is still an absolute bargain. And for gold, you get to uh, chat with me after most of the streams in the voice chat. And also you get to um, vote for where I fly the following week. So this, uh, this flight here was Satira's suggestion and he was only able to make that suggestion Cozzy's in Club Filbert Gold. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, then uh, um, just click the join button below the video. Yeah, this is default MSFS scenery, Riley. Doing your homework now, might as well get it out of the way. You're off tomorrow, so don't want to be dying to do it later. Ah, good for you. That sounds sensible to me. You're not getting back in there. <laughs> Why? Geepy, I got you all the way up into the Himalayas, to the world's most dangerous airport, safely and in utter comfort throughout. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what you people want sometimes. Did I all? Did we all see SAGL Simultex ground vehicles? No, no, I didn't. I have to look that up. It's fine to get back in. It's safer on the way back. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Right, talking of getting back in, should we get back in? Get this return leg going. Let's get the doors shut. Last chance, last chance to either get on or get off. No, too late, you're all coming. <laughs> oh dear. Right, right. Who needs checklists? We can do this without. It's not a complex plane. Uh, we've still got our anti-collision and position lights on, so that's good. We'll turn off the anti-ice for engine start. And, uh, yeah, we'll... Now, do we unfeather our props or not? The inbuilt checklist says yes, the written checklist in the manual says no. Let's put them full forward then, it's one less thing to do later. Start the right engine. Interestingly, I never actually turned off the seatbelt sign because <laughs> I wanted a full load for the way back as well. Let's just check our fuel. I'm pretty sure we got enough still. Yeah. And we'll introduce our fuel to the right engine. We'll try and watch the left engine from the outside. So, start a switch to left. Yeah, the door's all open, yeah. The animations are pretty nice as well. Seatbelt on, parachute running. <laughs> Comfy, he says, no pre <laughs> no pee brakes, no sandwiches, positive landing rate. I mean, it's not my fault there's no, there's no uh, toilet in the plane, Gooby. It's not my fault, boss. <laughs> it's 
See, this sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, me too, Paul. Me too. You missed the landing calls. Well, fortunately, this being YouTube, you can go and catch up with it uh, at your leisure. But suffice to say, it went very, very well, boss. This was Nepal Dangerous Airport. The next one will be St. Bart's. Yeah, we, we should do some Caribbean flying this, actually. It's a good point. This plane got ad blue just being the tank. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, there we go. That's that, that's that. Taxi light on. <clears throat> Turn the intake anti-ice back on. Turn the de-icer boots back to auto. I assume they'll sort themselves out. Turn the entrance light off. I don't think we need that. Seatbelt signs are on. Uh, taxi light is on. Peter Hughes is on. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, set flaps 10 for takeoff. And we will get going. Oh, OK. If you raise the camera straight up and poke over the mountain to the northeast, like 30 degrees, maybe, which is sort of the way we're facing, isn't it? Maybe slightly to the left. Might be able to see Everest. It's worth a go, isn't it? How high do I have to get the drone, though? Elliot, hello, how are you? And Mohammed, hello to you as well, welcome. So for those of you who have just joined, we have just landed into Lukla and we are about to do the return leg back to Kathmandu. Very, very exciting. I just wish that Kai had been here to see that. Ooh, is that, is that Everest? They say it takes 14 days to trek to Everest Base Camp from here. No, we're flying VFR, Riley. We're flying VFR. Do you know, I have done the odd... I did a couple of Caribbean hops in uh, the, the Club Filbert uh, voice lounge. But yeah, I'd definitely be up for a few more. Yeah, it's not really clear which, if any of these, is Everest. You can just see the peak. Is it way off in the distance? Can't be. It's got to be in this snow cover. Is this it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's it on the right there, kind of on its own, in the distance. This one or further away? Or one of these, maybe? Is this it? Almost in the middle now. Okay, this one. Oh, yeah, how do you turn landmarks on? Let's have a look at that. Be nice to have confirmation, wouldn't it? Uh, is it under... What's it under? Realism? Is it under assistance options? I think it might be, actually. Navi POI landmark markers on well that's not showing me anything oh mouse is on it okay fine fine good good so it was that one let's turn that off apply and save go back resume so there we are there is Everest Now then, to fly the plane again. Yeah, we've got flaps 10 set, just checking. Landing lights. Yeah, we'll just stick everything on here, seeing as we're so close to the runway, eh? Strobes on. And we'll set our uh, runway heading. And we'll fly back towards this VOR, but of course we want to follow the inbound course which means a quick bit of maths if we're going to do it properly. Can't see the A330 anymore, I want to try... Um, he wasn't... He wasn't in an A330 though, it was just MSFS being weird. 
I don't see a great deal of benefit to going back onto that sim, to be honest with you. You need the fauna markers, really? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, right. So, our last radial that we flew outbound from that VOR was... One oh nine. So instead of one oh nine, we want to fly two eight nine, I guess. So let's set that up now. Nothing worse than trying to hand fly and fiddle around with your uh, with your course pointer at the same time. Runway heading downhill, yes. <laughs> right, that's uh, that's two ninety, that's two eight nine. So that's the inbound course we want to follow. Okie dokie, okie do okie dokie, big and a pokey, up to twelve thousand again. Let's go. Oh, you think I should be able to see your uh, CJ2? Really? All right, let's have a quick look. I mean, I've connected. I don't see anything, though. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's showing up as a CJ4. That's acceptable. Nice. It's VGH and Dakar approaches online. Anyone else? Okay then, let's go. Let's go. Another aircraft up there. I don't know what they're doing. Ah, no, I might have just spawned in front of someone. Don't know. Don't know. Let's go back to the map view, see if we can see him. That is someone in a 738. Don't know where they're going. All right, let's go. Oh, there's something. Oh, I've got to reset my uh, rudder trip for takeoff. And the elevator trip. There we are. That's it. Let's do it. Only flaps 10. Yeah, you don't need more than that here, boss. Oh, really? Did it show up properly as an otter for you? Oh, you mean you were looking, oh, I suppose looking at it next to the, uh, next to the, um, nonsense. Nonsense. What? What? We've got flaps. What do you want? <laughs> um, yeah, seeing it next to the CJ1, right? Or the CJ4, as it was in my sim. Priority screenshot. Second priority flying the plane. Flaps up. Oh, they've just left from here, have they? Thank you, Alex. And back down the valley we go. It's looking good. Oh, I didn't have stuff. This must have been the stream. If 
anything, the weather's cleared up, isn't it, since we arrived? I don't know why I bothered setting runway heading, really. We were never going to fly it for more than a couple of... Uh, couple of hundred feet, were we? Oh, I'd like you to keep climbing though, please. Here we go. Same guy in the 737 as was in the A320 Neo. Right, well at least we don't have to look at him. <laughs> Yeah, it must be a YouTube thing, I think. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, I like this plane quite a lot, you know. I like this plane quite a lot. Flying to Lula is definitely on your bucket list. What? Not, not in real life with your PPL, right? <laughs> I hope not. I'm a Brit. How long do I leave the tea, do you leave tea bag in the mug? Um, two minutes, I would say. Two minutes. I'm not a huge tea drinker, though, despite being a Brit, I'm afraid. All right, landing lights can come off. And everything's hunky-dory. Oh, three minutes at least, you'd say. I nearly just ran into your poor 152. <laughs> I mean, all I would say to that is a 152 has no business being in the Himalayas. <laughs> Now it's patched. You'll take it out again tomorrow. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Getting conflicting info. Well, it depends. I mean, it really is down to taste. It depends how nice the tea is and how strong you like it, boss, really. Certainly don't put the milk in with the hot water, though. Always tea bag in first, then hot water. Then tea bag out, then milk, boss. Left in for like eight, yeah, I'd say that's too much. I would say that's too much. It's gonna be quite bitter. But if you like if you like it like that, then there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe you can fly for time. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Leave it in and crush it with a spoon while drinking. <laughs> that's the that's probably the northern way I would wonder. <laughs> Nick, what's good? What's good is flying a twin otter into Lukla. I highly recommend it. Oh, don't come on here asking for advice from British people if you're not gonna put milk in your tea, boss. That's a it's a whole different modern European nonsense having tea without milk. <laughs> this is why we left the EU trolls. People like you. <laughs> oh dear. Notice her. A big reason I think tea is a little on the bitter side is because I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, eight minutes is a very, very long time. Tea, milk and one sugar. I'm with Melon. Yeah. America is with you. Milk and tea is gross. Yeah, but so is having tea cold with nothing. Yeah. You don't really do tea in America at all, do you? Certainly not hot tea, as you call it. Uh, 
is in the northern way deep frying your tea. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. You will from now on be putting milk in your tea and doing two minutes. Good for you. Try it. See if you like it. Another, I mean, another option is lemon. I know a lot of people like lemon in tea, but I, I don't like. I mean, black tea with nothing in it is horrible. Really, Simon? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, it's. I would say 99.9% of tea drunk in the UK has milk in it. If something like Darjeeling, especially first flush, oh, we have a property expert here talking first flush Darjeeling. You'd say no more than one to two minutes and no milk, lemon or anything. Yeah, same with, same with obviously herbal teas, Rubosh, I don't put milk in. Some do, I don't. But yeah, if you're drinking normal black tea, I would never ever have it without them, personally. Canada does like tea, it's true. But they tend to have mostly Liptons, I think, which is not a tea I rate. Coffee is the way in Canada. Yeah, and America. American tea tap water in the microwave tells you all you need to know. I was so, I, 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 the first time I came across that was actually in Montreal. I was staying at my friend's house and we were, uh, and she had never had tea with milk in it. So she said she wanted to try tea the British way. So I said, oh, I'll make you, I'll make you a cup of tea. And I was like, where's the kettle? She said, well, we don't have a kettle. So I said, how do you make the water hot? And yeah, lo and behold, put water in a mug and stuck it in the microwave. It's all about iced tea, sweet tea if you're in the same. Yeah, and I like iced tea once in a while, but it's, it's, a, it's a drink for a different occasion. It's not a drink to have with breakfast or to calm your nerves or during a tea break. Yeah, Americans do know how to do coffee. It's true. Mars bars in batter deep fry, that is a thing, I know. Australia is quite snobby about coffee. I know, I've spoken to Harrison about coffee. It's a whole other world. You have tea leaves, do you? Loose tea. Nice. Yeah, I quite like a good old grey as well. <laughs> I mean, he is Australian, Aussie MSFS pilot. <laughs> Lipton's not good. Even Australians don't like it. Yeah. Pickwick, some sort of forest fruit thing. Oh God, don't put milk in that, Tiles. Don't put milk in that. My God, that'll be horrific. If, if, it's, if it hasn't got actual tea in it, which I suggest forest fruit tea probably doesn't, if it doesn't have tea leaves in it, firstly, it's not tea. Secondly, it would be disgusting with milk in it. Mate is the drink in that. Yeah, I've never tried mate. What does it taste like? Very tea is mostly sugar. If you can microwave wa water to boiling point, does it matter? It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. But it does, and I don't know why. I just, I guess it's, I guess it's sort of the ceremony of it, you know what I mean? Or the, the habitual stick the kettle on, put the tea bag in the mug, pour the boiling water on top of it. I'm not saying it tastes any worse. It just feels weird to me. Genuine question, do English people really enjoy tea with a scone? I do, yes. Yes. It's, it's a rare treat, it's not something that we do regularly. But, um, yeah, we call it afternoon tea, you know, you have a, a scone with clotted cream and jam. Well, it's, no, we call it like either a Devon cream tea or a Cornish cream tea, depending on which way you put the jam and the cream on. But yeah, a, 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 proper, a proper scone with, with fruit in it good dollop of proper clotted cream and some jam with a cup of tea is hard to beat. It feels weird because it's wrong, yes. Yeah, buy yourself proper tea and then put milk in it. It's a two-step process here. Not some weird fruit infusion thing. 
Really? So it's, it's just no Starbucks in Australia now? This is the exact kind of conversation two pilots would have. <laughs> what is an English breakfast? A traditional English breakfast is, is bacon and eggs. It's the staple. Um, you might have a sausage, you might have mushrooms, beans, tomato, fried bread. Um, yeah, the eggs would generally traditionally be fried. But that's not something, you know, that if you had that for breakfast every day, you'd die very young. <laughs> but I do, I do love a full English breakfast, I really do. You don't like the fruit ones? Eh, fair enough, fair enough. PayPal me the money, I will, boss. <laughs> I said, sorry, state of affairs, when you can't have can't afford tea tolls. I will. Send me a PayPal email address, boss. I will buy you a box of tea. Hard to take a heart attack on a plate, exactly. <laughs> Similar to a dog's breakfast. <laughs> Starbucks is not for people who like coffee, it's for people who like whipped cream, chocolate, caramel, and a hint of coffee flavour. I couldn't agree more, Jenny. I couldn't agree more. I genuinely don't get the attraction, the, the appeal of Starbucks. Right, what are we doing with this here flight anyway? We want to be flying to. Was it 47, 42, something like that? Um, 42. And then we want to be doing the opposite of radial 114, 2802, which is 294. What's it doing? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, do not trust the autopilot in the Twin Otter. Sometimes it will try and kill you. Let's disconnect it and reconnect it. Okay, so the autopilot is very, very screwed. <laughs> Another bug to add to the list. Maybe it might prefer heading mode. Let's try it on that. wants to turn me right. Okay, no autopilot then. We'll hand fly it. I didn't get Starbucks either. Went once to see what the fuss was about. Came out with overpriced coffee you could have made at home. Yeah, and it probably would have been nicer if you had made it at home as well. It's kind of hard to compete with all the Italian, French, etc. immigrant heritage that brought all the cafe coffee style out here after World War II. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Forgot to give the Twitter breakfast, yeah. That's because people are ignorant of Starbucks historically. It took the US from watered down drip coffee to European style espresso, the milk and sugar thing came after it got popular and copied. Okay. Yeah, I like Marmite. Might be trying to go back to the start. The default autopilot that the Twatter uses is Garbo. 
But even if it's trying to go back to the start, it shouldn't be banking us that much, should it? Mate, mate, many our planes trying to kill us. <laughs> it's the same as in the DC-6, is it? You have to do jiggly things to get it to work properly or download the mod that fixes it. Didn't know there was a mod. Send me a link, boss, if you get the chance. Right, what did I say the next radial we wanted to follow was? Zero two two nine of four. I mean, it, once you've got it in trim, which I haven't, it's not that hard to to hand fly. Although it is wanting to roll right, don't know why that is. Can try and sort it out with a little bit of left. Ah, it's probably because we're still on our takeoff trim setting, actually. Has that helped? Yeah, that has helped. Cool. If that's the default Garmin 530, it's utter, utter junk. Yeah, I believe it is. You don't want to go back to Luke. <laughs> no, nor do I, Jenny, truth be told. Matt, hello! You can confirm that Starbucks sucks, yes. I think that's something we have all managed to agree on. <laughs> Starbucks coffee is way too sweet. Well, if, well yeah, if they, put the, if they put the syrups and things in, it's disgusting and sweet. If you have it without anything in it, it's horrible and bitter and burnt. Nav following is messy. Yeah, it's, to be fair, it's the same in the Just Flight Pipers, isn't it? I've never had Vegemite, but I believe they're kind of similar, but probably you shouldn't say that to an Australian. This is the second leg mark, and we're on our way back to Kathmandu now. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Got to get the mod for the 4.30, 5.30, okay. I'd be brilliant at a Marmite eating competition. I could easily eat a tablespoonful of it. It's not something I usually choose to do, but I'm confident I could. Coffee is best had black or in circumstance, certain circumstances with a little milk. You'll not accept any sugar anywhere near it. Now I have to say I do like a sugar in a coffee. I don't like it without. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Paul. Vegemite was horrible and I'd never recommend it to non-Aussies ever. And, then you, and you've never had Marmite? I think you should have Marmite. I think you should try it. I think you should, as someone earlier said, piece of toast, preferably white, I would say. White toast. A bit, a good bit of butter, a thin layer of Marmite, and a cup of tea with milk. That is, that is a good breakfast right there. Don't go to Starbucks, indeed. Australia does have a Starbucks counterfeit called Zaraf Zarafas. Okay, is it is it bad? Is it as bad as Starbucks or a bit better? I might be flying in the wrong direction. No, no, no. We've been to, we've been to uh, Lukla and now we're heading back to Kathmandu, boss. Don't you worry, Marker. We're we're tracking this radial inbound to Kathmandu VOR. We can't we can't be too far wrong. We had an Aussie exchange student for a while who brought Vegemite, but you haven't had Marmite. Tell you what, Charles, send me a PayPal. I'll give you enough for a uh, for uh, a loaf of cheap white bread, some butter, some Marmite, and a box of tea bags. Hot toast melted, but yeah, it's the way. It's the only way. The butter, yeah, the 
with Marmite on toast, you have to have the butter melted because there's, is, there's something grotesque about having like the Marmite actually mixed in with unmelted butter on the top. So make sure your toast is good and hot before you butter it. Top tip. What's KM? So I just picked up a stream deck to use with MSFS. It's completely amazing. Oh, it's one of those things that I quite fancy as well. But I've never actually got. Again, to use with MSFS rather than specifically adjusting streaming settings. You can't buy Marmite there, really? Really? Blimey. I'll have to stick some in the post then or something. <laughs> or you'll just have to come to London one day. I'll <laughs> take you out for Marmite on toast. <laughs> you don't have a toaster either, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it's not. You don't, you European people. You don't really do toast like we do, do you? But you can do it under the grill. Zarafas isn't, isn't bad though. Oh, good. Oh, so you've got a Starbucks rip-off, but it's better. That's that's all right. Um, kilometers? What? Oh, for oh for kilometers, yeah, they line up right with you. In Canada, I saw how bad coffee can be. Half a liter of filter coffee. This is how they drink it. I'm an EU double espresso drinker. Mm. But you can get very, very nice filter coffee as well. I think it's just often served pretty weak, and that's what spoils it. A good quality filter coffee is probably my favourite, above and beyond anything made with espresso. Ramon, you're welcome. Well, you're welcome. Nice to have you here. What's so good and worth every penny? Oh, the stream deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. My, yeah, you must have like an English store out there. I'd have thought somewhere. Somewhere in Copenhagen. Or sort of a general imported food store. Don't know. I know you can get it in France. Ah, that's beautiful. So what's this? I assume, I assume that the weather's still favouring 02 in Kathmandu, is it? Has anyone checked by chance? Oh no actually, it's shifted. It's favouring 2-0. Winds 250 at 3, nice. I guess we'll do a right-hand circuit to land. Jackson or Jack, welcome! Thank you very, very much for the uh, for the one pound uh, super chat, boss. Nice to see you. How's life? You can buy 125 grams of Marmite on the internet for £13, including freight. £13? No, it ain't worth that. Yes, we're returning to Kathmandu, Ramon. We've already flown to Lukla, we're doing the return leg now. A good filter coffee beetle, agreed. Denmark banned the import of Marmite in 2011, why? Found my mate in your regular shop, bought a small jar, took it home, and was certain it's all the joke on foreigners, just like so strummy and sweet. It's not that bad, Christopher. <laughs> no, no, that's all right, Robert. Mm. 
from an espresso machine, Martin, or from a, like a mocha pot. I, how did you eat your marmite, Christopher? Because I think you might have been doing it wrong. If you if you used anything other than a small sliver on freshly buttered toast, you were doing it wrong, boss. Yeast extract spread falls foul of Danish law, restricting product products fortified with added vitamins, joining Horlick's Ovaltine and Farley's Rusks. Well, I never. Right, well, you'll have to come on holiday then for it. Hello, Lilo25, welcome. For some reason, Restream Chat isn't showing all of everyone's messages at the moment. I don't know why. I think I started my descent a little early. Possibly. Let's stop it here. <laughs> yes, from an espresso machine, my parents are quite snobby about coffee, right? <laughs> Best cappuccino in the world is in Italy. Yeah, that's, I'm sure, true. You tasted it, yeah. Tasting it off a knife, is, is that's advanced level stuff. Absolutely, that would be enough to put you off if you've never had Marmite before. Hello, make it with me. Welcome. How are you doing? I am flying with the latest update, yes. Assuming it hasn't been updated again today. 1010, one I think, is what I'm flying. Thank you very much for the uh, for the sub, Ramon. This is the Aerosoft Twin Otter. Oh, I never updated the overlay, did I? No wonder everyone thinks I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, it's a lovely plane, lovely old-fashioned cockpit, isn't it? Make it with me. Thank you for the sub as well. And if anyone else watching hasn't subscribed, I'd really, I really appreciate a sub and a like if you've, uh, if you've got the time to do both. That would be much appreciated. Apparently, you have to learn that the Earth is an oblate spheroid. That is a fun word to say, yeah. So the elevation at touchdown is uh, 4,395 feet. Oof, weather's grotty, weather's grotty. But we are now very, very close. So I think what we're gonna do is hope that we can descend through the clouds and not hit a mountain. <laughs> Yeah, so we're overhead Kathmandu uh, city at the moment. It is better. They've got the sounds better. They've got VOR tracking sorted out. Yeah, so it is better. 
Disappointing that Aerosoft chose to release this plane limiting the situ simulation depth just to make it Xbox compatible. Did they? Is that what they did? I don't know. I think it's fairly it's a fairly standard level of systems depth for an Aerosoft plane. I don't think it's got anything to do with the Xbox myself. You've never understood the international dateline. It's like the opposite of the Greenwich Meridian. Jack, another one pound super chat. Thank you very much, boss. Thank you very much. If anyone else would like to donate, best way to do it is via streamlabs.com slash filbertflies, because then YouTube don't take a cut. And another pound. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Right, we're going to have to descend now. We are pretty much overhead the airport, I believe. And I can't really see anything, which is not ideal for VFR flying. Yeah, I couldn't really put into words why it's there, to be honest with you. Okay, so we are now to the west of the airport. It's over on our right somewhere. So we can see the ground, which is good. Um, but it would be nice to have everything a little bit clearer. Hopefully as we get lower, we will. So we're going to set up now for a, a right downwind. And hopefully we'll see the airport as we fly past it. If we don't, that's not good. Personally, I want both, Nick. And we'll keep letting our altitude slowly bleed off in the hope that we can be visual with the airport. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? Horrible and murky. See, now I'm sort of wishing I was doing an ILS, but that's not in the spirit of today's VFR flying, so I'm not going to do an ILS. I'm going to level off at 6,000 feet. Hope for the best. <laughs> and just, just set up for a very, very long final in the hope that I, uh, I yeah, have time to, uh, to spot the airport. Oh, it does like its terrain warnings, doesn't it? So we're about a thousand foot above ground level here, which is fine. Terrain. Yeah, this is quite dangerous, actually. <laughs> this is quite dangerous flying without any visibility and no nav aids. But we can, of course set this to runway heading which should give us an approximate place an approximate um, heading to the airport there's the airport <laughs> closer than I thought so we'll go round again we'll do one more uh, one more circuit it's good to, good to be visual isn't it it's nice to be visual <laughs> oh dearie me you'd rather have the spirit of landing the plane safely <laughs> yeah alright let's see if we can do an ILS then shall we uh, let's see what the uh, 
Oh, Jack again! No, there is no ILS. There is no ILS. I just made an assumption that there would be a major international airport. But no, there's a, um, it's a VOR approach for two. But nothing for two zero, I'm afraid. Yeah, this... Who would have thought that this would be the big problem? You know? Rather than... Um, rather than Lukla, which we managed to land at perfectly fine, this big major international airport is what's scuppering us. <laughs> might help to bring our speed back somewhat, actually. And we'll get even slightly lower and ignore all the terrain callouts. And then hopefully, next time around, we'll be visual with the airport before we're immediately above it. Our first stage of flaps out, which I'm reliably informed you can do at 110 knots. You knew you should have stayed in Lukla, <laughs> yeah. It's a location where the clock will reset, so it's noon at Greenwich, it's midnight at the international dateline, so it's a new day. Yeah. Get our speed back a little more. This is all highly irregular. Never do this in real life. Ever. You see the airport? Not really. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to land this bloody plane. As how a roughly Dutch translated saying goes, an accident is in a small corner. I feel like I need a co-pilot. <laughs> and a good one at that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We'll get uh, all of our flaps out on this downwind. And then we'll do a, a, a rapid base and, and final turn. <laughs> Checked is not what I need. But I think I'd even find that reassuring at this stage in the game. It's got to be down this way somewhere. I'm not sure that the VOR is actually that. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Fortunately, we've got a nice, nice long runway. <laughs> now, let us not forget that the point of this was to see me do a beautiful landing into Lukla. And that was achieved. This is just, this is all just a bit of fun now. 15, 40, Loads of runway. Got time to stabilise it directly overhead, like that. There we are. <laughs> Welcome back to Kathmandu, everybody. 
<laughs> Tree safety. Thank you, OZMSFS uh, pilot. Flaps can come up. And you've got, to, you've got to vacate quite slowly in this plane because it does like to tip over if you're not careful. Oh, landing light switch is the wrong way round, aren't they? Noob. The airline's chief pilots would like a word. What, to give me a medal for landing visually with virtually no visibility? <laughs> no risk involved at all, exactly. I mean, what do you do? What do you do in that scenario? You've got no precision approaches, you've got the weather closing in. What you do, Trolls, is you land the damn thing like the hero you are. <laughs> Safely, smoothly, and everyone claps. That's what you do, boss. <laughs> You're welcome, Jenny. Would I recommend the Twin Otter in its current state? Yes, I would. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's not, it's not the, the best aircraft ever produced, but it's, uh, I really like it. That was butter, but I'm not sure the rest was quite according to the textbook. Well, no one's given me the textbook, Twills. So there we are, that's what you get. I think Twitch has rubbed off on Phil, but gone is the dry professionalism of YouTube simming and hello to cowboy antics. What's dabbing, boss? I don't even know what dabbing is. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> I think the only medal I'll be getting will be the staples on the termination packet. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you... I, honestly... This kind of flying is so alien to me, I have no idea what they'd have done in real life in that kind of situation. None at all. No precision approaches, VFR flight. Not much visibility when you get there. Diverted, I guess. Diverted back to Lukla. <laughs> There is no VRR approach to uh, to runway two zero though. Only to zero two. <laughs> Gosh, they've still got the millions of pushback tugs. Christ, what are these things doing? I guess there is a VOR circling approach we could have tried, to be fair, but... Yeah. Boom! There we are. Welcome back to Kathmandu. Let's try again and feather the prop with my... Uh, control. Ah, it's working now. Good. Right, and we can do the checklist properly this time, I think. <clears throat> Flaps are up, anti-ice. Did I turn it off? I think I did. No, not yet. Intake anti-ice off. De-icer boots off. Landing lights are off. Transponder we didn't use. All trim tabs should be at zero degrees. Anti-collision lights. Now it says they should come off, but I don't believe it. I think they should come off after you stop the engines, right? Parking brakes set. Power levers fly idle. Propeller levers feathered. Generators are off. 
Uh, fuel levers can come off. We can go pop outside for that and watch the propellers spin down, see if they've sorted out that animate. Ooh. That's not a great sound, is it? <laughs> In before <laughs> Flies realises he's flown the entire day with the generators on. They weren't on, boss. They weren't on. I think I think I, fl I flew the outbound flight with them on and forgot to turn them on again before the inbound flight. I think that's what's happened. Um, right, what else? Uh, lights. Fuel, fuel boost pumps can come off. All the lights can come off. We can turn off the battery master and the DC master. And that's reset the checklist. We can bring our controls back. We can put the control locks on. And we can let everyone out, which is basically what everyone's been waiting for for at least the last uh, 15 minutes of this rather hectic arrival. And there we have it. To Lukler and back. <laughs> in the Twin Otter, smoothly, safely, and very, very enjoyably. I'm sure you would all agree. Let me catch up with the chat. Uh, you're, you're arriving as well. Excellent. Safe landing, Nikki, if, you ha if you're not down already. Um, <laughs> Jenny! Thank you very much indeed for the five dollar tip. And you're thank you for not slamming into a mountain and killing us. You're all. very welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it's an ancient push tug burial ground, and those are the ghosts of Bush's past. <laughs> Oh dear. Help, just realised I have to do an air cadet speech in front of a bunch of high ranking officers. Oh, about what? About what? Uh, so that's an MSFS thing, Lillo, with the windscreen wipers. For some reason, the rain is actually drawn on the inside of the windscreen. So none of the aircraft have working windscreen wipers. Although, allegedly, allegedly, um, Phoenix have managed to fix it for their A320, but no other aircraft do they actually clear the rain properly, unfortunately. You don't remember your flight in the twatter quite like this. Why? Did 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 you crash into the side of a mountain? Because that seems to be the main the main thing about today. The take home point from this flight is that I got everyone safely down without crashing into the side of a mountain. But um yeah, that that approach was that approach was uh, a little bit dicey. It must be said. <laughs> Marker three months at Club Philbert Gold. Thank you very very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. That's much appreciated. Um, think you might be fired due to those terrain warnings. No, the terrain warnings in this are overzealous. Tim says Tim's a real world pilot. He knows these things. <laughs> Um, as if no one from a sober has noticed that. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, there aren't really any mountains in Denmark, but we did a little less of a steep approach. Okay. I mean, that was, if anything, a rather shallow approach, Twelves, I think. That was less than three degrees, I'd say. That's the beauty of having such a long runway and being able to uh, to land halfway along it and still have loads of room to stop. That's, that's what they call uh, in the trade... <laughs> Sky God Landing, I believe. I believe. Not sure of, of the exact technical term, but I have heard that banded about. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I think I think you might be misremembering your own flight, boss. I think. <laughs> Fleming. Fleming Didrickson. Thank you very much indeed for the sub. The aircraft's $37. Uh, sorry, 37 euros, I believe. There's a link in the video description. All excuses to keep your license. Yeah. Was less than three degrees from fifty foot and below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The final, as we call it in the trade halls, was less than three degrees. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I did. I did descend rather rapidly when I first saw the airport. I'd forgotten that, but that is true. Ah <laughs> uh, well, you got to laugh, haven't you? You got to laugh. You got to laugh. 
Well, I enjoyed that quite a lot. I hope you all did too. I think I just pulled a muscle in my eyes due to the reflexive eye <laughs> roll. <laughs> oh, dearie me. You lot, honestly, you're something else. You really are. Anyway, anyway, thank you all for entertaining me during that rather tense flight. And thank you all for the uh, positive feedback and the reassurance and the uh, congratulations all round. That's uh, all so much appreciated. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, do yeah, click the YouTube like button. That's a very good point. Thank you, Alex. Um, and you wonder why some airlines have a rule against more than a thousand feet per minute below 500 feet. <laughs> Bit of an ego hit when you see the passengers kiss the ground once they disembark. <laughs> oh dear. Paul, you're going to bed. You're fully asleep at the keyboard. No worries. Great flight overall. Lots of fun and we're pleasure all. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you soon, boss. <laughs> Stomach hurts from laughing. Good. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Well, that's a good... Uh, that's a good way to end a stream, I think. <laughs> you are welcome, Martin, and thank you as well for being here and your uh, continued Club Filbert support. Um, talking of which, a uh, great time as always. Well, good. All I can say is that was a stream. <laughs> uh, all I can say is at least Kai wasn't here. <laughs> Anyway, so before everyone shoots off, uh, I have to work, unfortunately, tomorrow through Sunday. My next stream is going to be, therefore, on either Monday or Tuesday. Do keep an eye on the Discord. In fact, do join the Discord if you're not there already. Um, I don't know if my commands are working again yet. No, I don't think they are. Anyway, join my Discord server. There's a link in the video description. I'll be announcing what we're doing next week, uh, sometime by over the weekend, I should think. Um, and thank you very, very much indeed, in particular to everyone who's been so generous today with their donations and things like that. So Seared Lamb started the ball rolling with £7.97, which I assume is $10, I think. Um, we had Christopher renewing his club fill, but gold, 12 months he's been with us. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much, boss. Uh, Trolls uh, resubscribing for th his third month. Uh, and then Jack with multiple super chats, totaling £5. Thank you very much for those, Jack. Uh, Jenny with the £3.70 tip. Marker with his uh, um, renewal of his Club Filbert membership. Also, also gold. Very generous of you, boss. And uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks to all of you. Thank you, Scott. Glad you enjoyed it. And and Ribbon, lovely to have you back. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we'll call it a day there. I will see you next week, if not beforehand, in the Discord uh, later. All right. Uh, oh, oh yes, oh yes. And Club Philbert Golden Emerald people, I will be in the post stream uh, VIP uh, voice chat uh, as soon as the music finishes. Hope to see you there. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your weeks, and uh, goodbye.